Hey you guys, I am going to get straight into this video. Um, this wasn't going to be the first video that I was going to do coming back, but um, however, I've been following along with it. And at this point, I'm going to try to do this video and not let my emotions get the best of me. So I'm just going to hop right into it, you guys. What I'm going to be discussing is what is going on in Maui. I think we have all have seen um, what is going on in the utter de devastation that has taken place in Maui. I am so angry. I am. I just said I'm going to not let my emotions get the best of me. All right, y'all. I think I've got myself together. So if you don't know, on August the 8th, of this year so just a few days ago there was a fire that ignited on Maui um it is a wildfire that spread rampant the issue is that the citizens and the people were not notified by officials who had the authority to notify them um and as a result lord y'all <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get it together and keep myself together. Mm. If you guys have been with me, you know that certain things make me very emotional, especially when it comes to like humans and loss of life. And okay, I got this. The wildfire spread so fast, you guys, that so many people were not able to get out. Um, and they, the, the issue is they weren't notified. They were not notified. They weren't given a warning. They were just left to die by officials who had the authority to sound the alarm. This is what makes me furious as doesn't make a lot of people furious because there's no reason that this amount of lives should have been lost. Um, preferably no lives should have been lost, but definitely not to this amount should lives have been lost you guys um of course the count is going up there's over 2,000 homes and businesses that have been damaged by these wildfires there's so many stories that you can see of people actually recovering i just read the latest story about a woman whose 15 year old was home alone at the time and she tried to get home to her 15 year old and was not able to get home in time and she ended up finding her own child's remains a few days later so a little bit about this wildfire this is the deadliest wildfire in more than 100 years you guys i will go ahead and let you know that as of yesterday the emergency man management official let me see if i can get his name right here he's a he's something special is what i'll say he's something herman and Indaya, the maui's emergency management chief He's the one that did not sound the alarm. And not only that, but when he was asked at the press conference, did he regret not sounding the alarm? He had the audacity to say that he did not regret sounding the alarm. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Just no regard for human life. The fact that you know so many people have lost their lives and, and family members have lost their loved ones and for you to still sit up here and say, that you don't regret doing that is unbelievable. So he resigned citing health reasons. I bet he does have health reasons at this point. He probably has a lot going on. I'm sure there are a lot of uh, people that are probably coming after him at this time. I'm sure um, he couldn't take the heat is, is the issue because the outrage that many people have for this situation that didn't have to be catastrophic so i will say that the most destructive blaze on maui was a 2160 acre lahaina fire as of thursday 90 percent of that was contained as of thursday night and today is friday friday afternoon um other wildfire fires are still burning on Maui Island, including 1,081-acre Olinda fire, which was 85% contained as of Thursday night, and then the 202-acre Kula, Kula, I want to say Kula. If I'm pronouncing these wrong, let me know, y'all. I don't mean any disrespect. I don't want to mess up any of these names, y'all. Um, which was 80% contained according to Maui County. And of course, the people working these fires and just across the board, they're spread thin. This is a, this is a disaster, you guys. I mean, 
Maui Island is there's such there's so much failure these people were failed by so many people by so many agencies down to the power company the power company should have killed power a lot sooner than they did so I'm going to get into that of course as of right now from everything that I'm seeing there is no cause they haven't determined excuse me they haven't determined the cause of the fire at this point of course they have ATF and other officials down there investigating um, arson investigators as well down there so Hawaiian Electric said publicly publicly in 2019 that it would conduct drone surveys to out of identify areas vulnerable to wildfires y'all this is 2023 so you knew that there was a potential issue back then yeah here we are in 2023 and things still have not been handled y'all i'm so sorry for my tone in this video i don't mean to be this way at all um i'm not even sure if i should like try to refilm this when i have calmed down because i said i would try to keep my composure i'm just i'm livid i'm livid I'm living. Um, so between 2019 and the year 2022, Hawaiian Electric invested less than 245,000 on wire, wildfire specific projects. That, my phone got overheated because I am in the car. It got overheated, so it shut down. Um, so the company, what I was saying is the company has spent roughly 84 million since 2018 on maintenance and vegetation. So some of those things that are included in that is the cutting of trees and like trimming of trees and upgrading equipment. But yet they invested less than 245,000 on wildfire specific projects, but okay. Um, while I understand that maintaining trees and everything could be helpful um I, I feel like more money could and should have been delegated towards wildfire projects the electric company as well as some of their subsidiaries did not uh, de-energize the power poles once they were aware that some of them had fallen down um and were even on vegetation they still didn't de-energize um de-energize the poles so that was part of the issue as well from what i'm reading here it also says that electricity powers the pumps that provide the water needed for firefighting so everybody is just trying to get answers and try to figure out what what went wrong where we have citizens and people that are are in need of everything so if you guys can you know donate anything make sure you're donating to legit um places you guys because i feel like when devastation and um there are disasters that strike people take this time to create fake like gofundmes um, and and fake fundraisers so just make sure you don't get scammed you guys i don't have any of the information but just do your research and also want to let you know there are still so many people missing right now there are several that have been identified um and publicly identified there are dna samples that are being taken because as you can imagine there is um not a lot left so there are different identification techniques that they are having and will have to use to identify these um these victims so that they can bring them home to their families something that we need to think about are the first responders that are dealing with grief as well. There are a lot of first responders that, I mean, they're working, they are um, recovering remains. Some of these remains and victims that they're recovering are their own family members. So imagine the toll that that's taken on them as well. There should be as many resources for everyone down there at this point as possible we should have people down there on the ground surveying just seeing what we can do what we can provide to help these 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 people like i just i can't imagine these people have lost everything life as they know it has changed they lost their loved ones they lost they lost their homes they they've lost businesses a community and communities like this i feel are really close-knit i don't know don't hold me to it but i just feel like when i think of <laughs> certain places 
islands, I just feel like they're just automatically a close-knit community. So just imagine just the devastation for the entire community. These first responders have even watched their homes burn down to the ground. Watch their homes burn to the ground and can do nothing. Another thing that I have seen that and stories that I have come across are people could not get out. They just simply could not get out. Not only was the alarm not sounded, but I have seen videos. Actually, there was one involving a power line down and the guy's recording and traffic is just going one way. And I think he pretty much said, had the power company not been in the way, they would have been able to get more people out, um, but they kind of felt like they were in the way. And you just see all kinds of stories about, you know, people just didn't, they didn't have time. They didn't have time. Not everybody had time to get out. So what, what, what are your thoughts? I, I'm just, I'm sitting here, I'm at a loss for words at this point. And I don't want to keep rambling. Exactly. Especially when I said that I was not going to get my emotions and everything, let my emotions get the best of me. And I feel like I did. So now I feel like my head's kind of spinning. So I don't want to just sit here and ramble. Um, but I'm going to try to have another discussion about this and just um, provide more information as I see it become available and maybe try to keep my composure a little bit better. But um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Thanks so much for watching and make sure you leave comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.